Hi, this is Matt Cedarberg from T-Spines, Inc., and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, an introduction to TS Elements for SolidWorks. Um, I'm joined today by Kyle Houchins from the Outside Digital Art and Design, and um, we're excited to introduce this new product to you. And I'll do that first by just starting through a brief PowerPoint, giving an overview of, of this product, why we created it, and how it, how it works, and then Kyle will... Uh, take the remainder of the webinar to show a live demo and, and show how, how TS Elements works. So, um, TS Elements for SolidWorks um, was, uh, was created to kind of solve, um, or I guess introduce a new way of, of modeling, and that is to uh, let the design model be made by the designer actually um, serve as the, the outer shell of the engineering model. Uh, today, the design model is usually passed over to the engineer who rebuilds it, and there, there's some issues with that. First of all, it can be difficult to recreate um, these designs in a solid modeler while respecting design intent. Uh, it can be time-consuming for the engineer to, to do that surfacing in the, in the solid modeler, and that's compounded by the fact that engineers uh, may not be a surfacing expert. Um, here's just one example of an image of, of, a, of a design that was created um, in a different modeler and then the engineer tried to recreate it in a solid modeler and wasn't able to and needed to use uh, T-splines to bring it in there. Um, here's just another example of, uh, of a, a surface that is difficult to, to recreate in a solid modeler that again using T-splines um, you're able to, to push into a solid modeler. So, um, what TS Elements lets you do then is to have the design model actually be the engineering model. You can import the aesthetic surface directly into your solid modeler as an editable surface or a solid body. Then you can add the internal structure or other features to the model, and then either the designer or the engineer can make the necessary changes uh, to the aesthetic surface. So what this lets you do is, is create smooth organic designs win more business with faster iterations and just make your work more intuitive and fun. So today's webinar will focus on bringing models created in T-Splines for Rhino into TS Elements for SolidWorks and they're being able to, um, to use those as part of your actual uh, manufacturing model. So um, with that, let me turn the time over to, to Kyle who will uh, show this workflow and just to introduce Kyle. He's the owner of the Outside Digital Art and Design and an authorized T-Splines trainer. He's created over a thousand models um, for the twin entertainment industries and uh, and we're glad to have him introducing our product. So, so a little bit more information on the webinar. Um, all attendees are muted but we're, uh, we're really uh, interested in, in answering your questions so please uh, type in your questions in the GoToWebinar box. We will either type back responses throughout the webinar, and we'll also let Kyle answer some of those audibly. So let's go ahead and uh, make Kyle a presenter. Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, as Matt said, I'm Kyle Houchins. I own the Outside Digital Art and Design. Um, we do... Uh, surfacing and product design models for the toy, entertainment, automotive, aerospace, whatever needs to be done, we do it. And uh, we do a lot of it with T-Splines. So um, this, this model uh, was actually created by uh, our T-Splines modeling, resident modeling guru, Juan. And um, it's a fantastic example of how this TS Elements product fits into a product design workflow. Um, the idea behind this is to some extent to be a bridging product between the design and engineering worlds and the I guess the best way I could explain it would be it's a common language this TS uh, this TSM file format which is what um, T-Splines now can export into SolidWorks is, is kind of a universal language and the idea behind this is to allow designers to be able to design and engineers to be able to engineer let everybody do what they do best in order to leverage uh, their skills to create uh, products better faster and cheaper and the idea behind this is 
you know, you want designers designing the aesthetics and a, and a typical issue, a reoccurring problem, at least in my own practice, is I'll work with, you know, obviously very skilled engineers, um, but there's always this issue where I'll do a surface model, I'll kick it over to somebody in, you know, Pro Engineer or SolidWorks or something like that, and it's not parametric. Obviously, the goal of an engineering model would be to have something parametric that you can send to tooling because if there's an issue on the tooling side, you want to be able to go back into the into the feature tree, adjust the parameters, update the model, and fix the problem problem without having to go all the way back uh, to the to the design model. So typically, what happens is no matter how good the the design model is, and by design model I'm meaning something that's created by by a designer that went to art school or some facsimile of there, um, is, is it looks great, but obviously, you know, they don't teach, um, you know, <laughs> they don't teach engineering in, in art schools. So the idea would be to let the designers design the aesthetics, let the engineers do the hard points and make sure that everything's going to function, and, um, and combine those two skills through this bridging TS Elements project to let, um, to let everybody kind of do what they do best. So this, <clears throat> I want to briefly show kind of how this model was made, just for anybody who's not familiar with T-splines. Um, this model basically started off as a series of curves, and there's a tool within T-splines called Pipe, which allows you to select all these curves and, uh, and, and, and basically create a, uh, a surface off of just of those curves. So this is the basis for, for this frame. Basically, it's a one button click thing. You pick the curves, you run the pipe tool. The pipe tool automatically figures out these intersections and does your blends and everything and gives you the basis for how you would start putting together this frame. Um, Juan then took this, this basic element and started pushing and pulling on the, on the, the verts and stuff on the model. Um, and just started adjusting this model to match his original reference curves. And it's, it's a very simple process of just picking some of, the, picking some of the verts or picking some of the edges or picking some of the faces and start pushing the model around just like it was made out of digital clay. So he continued along and he started adding some edges here to sharpen up some of the features. And you'll notice that as he's added edges, that the features start to sharpen up so that you can start to pull out some of this harder edge detail. Um, he continued with that, added a few, more, a few more edges and a few more details. And you can see when I get rid of the isoparams that the model is shaping up really nicely at this point. Extraordinarily gorgeous intersections and transitions. And anybody who out there is working in the bicycle industry who has tried to model a, a bottom bracket to main triangle intersection here for like a carbon fiber frame, uh, their jaw has got to be on the ground right now seeing that intersection right there. Because that, that was a piece of cake as opposed to, you know, something that would be about 600 patches trying to get that all to match up uh, in, a, in a typical surfacing situation. Um, <clears throat> at this point, one was kind of experimenting with the, with the two sides. Um, there's some subtle differences between one side and the other. Um, decided which side that he liked and applied symmetry to it. At this point, if we pick one of these edges, you'll notice that with symmetry enabled, that the modification happens on both sides of the line of symmetry. Um, and the last step would be then to add some details do some final refinement and um, basically get everything where it needs to be so that the designer was happy with it. So, yeah, Kyle, one, one other thing just to interject um, that's, that's critical as well is, is being able to match parts of that model to exact cylinders. Um, yes, absolutely. The, the, the last step on this would have been to, um, to put some curves in here. These are NURBS curves that... <clears throat> that he then matched using the using the new match tool, and this is this is a tool that went from nowhere to somewhere great. Um, this used to be the tool when I was doing training that we would just kind of gloss over because it was it was a really scary tool. But um, they've completely rewritten it for the newest version of T splines, 
and it's <clears throat> absolutely brilliant now in the fact that not only can you match native T-spline's geometry to NURBS geometry, you can also match T-spline's geometry to curve geometry. So in this case, what Juan did was he picked some hard points for the seat tube and for the bottom bracket shell down here, <clears throat> and then matched using the T-spline's the match tool, basically forced the T-spline surface to match up to these hard points. And this, this would be a really great process for getting ready to send this thing to engineering because, you know, bicycles are kind of hard points with organic stuff in between and, and all that kind of stuff. So once he's got all that set up and he's prepped this file and got it ready to go, at this point as a designer I can say, okay, well, I'm signing off on this aesthetic. I'm going to take a look at it here and check and make sure that all my highlights and all my design features and everything that I'm looking at um, is is right, all my highlights are tracking correctly, and at this point I'm I'm pretty much happy with this and I'm ready to send it off to engineering. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna I'm gonna pick the object, do file, export selected, and there's a new file format down here called tspline files or .tsm, and that file format is specifically set up for exporting stuff to SOLIDWORKS. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and this is something that will be fixed um, eventually, otherwise I will keep bugging Matt by calling him at home at 3 o'clock in the morning saying, did you fix it yet? Did you fix it yet? Is um, T uh, SOLIDWORKS is, is currently a Y-up modeling space where T -spline, or uh, Sol Rhino, <laughs> I know too many packages here, Rhino and T-Splines are a Z-up paradigm. So the only thing you need to do before you send this out is to just rotate the model 90 degrees. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and rotate it from here to here. Now I'm going to pick it, export selected. Kyle, before, before you leave, could you just throw the TS off. shiny shader on that just to kind of track the highlights a little bit better? Absolutely. This is our TS Shiny display, so you can really see the highlights and stuff that's going on in here. This also works with the new Rhino V5 shadows and ground planes and all sorts of stuff like that. So, all right, so we rotate we rotate into a Y up scenario, and we export selected as a TSM. We've got that already set up. Just save it. There aren't any options. It just goes out as it is. And let's jump into SolidWorks. Now, <clears throat> here's my disclaimer. <laughs> I have about 10 years of Rhino modeling experience and about 15 hours of SolidWorks experience. So you SolidWorks experts out there, um, you are more than welcome to snicker at my stumbling around in SolidWorks here, but I think you can get the idea. So I'm going to open this as a... TSM, you'll notice that TSM is down here. Find frame to SolidWorks. I'm going to open it up. <clears throat> and it comes in, since we rotated it, it comes in Y up. And you'll notice that it's exactly like it was when it left uh, when it left Rhino T spline. So let's address kind of the first some of the first engineering concerns with this, which is the fact that it's an open surface. And, you know, usually when you import an object, it's, it's just a dumb solid or a dumb import, and there's not really anything that you can do to it. You can't modify it or anything. This is where the beauty of this TSM file format, TS Elements and, and T-Splines for Rhino, kind of, this is where the bridge happens here. So let's, let's look a little bit at how we can deal with this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw some planar surfaces in here. I'm going to get rid of this edge. Oops. Commence snickering. I'm going to throw another one in here. And 
going to throw another one up here. And just for a little interest here, um, these curves are not dead planar, so we're not going to use a planar patch on them, but we're going to use a filled surface just to show that that works well. Same thing down here. And at this point, <clears throat> we've gone ahead and filled all the holes on this, and you guys are all saying, well, that's not too impressive yet. Um, what we are going to do then is knit this and turn it into a solid. Again, not terribly impressive at this point because everybody can do that. But what we are going to do, if we get this straightened out, is I'm going to sketch on this and I'm just going to add a couple of references in here. And I'm going to just add a center line reference from this point to this point. I'm going to add another one perpendicular off of that. And I'm going to throw a circle in here. And basically what I'm doing is making the curve for the bottom bracket shell. Throw a couple of quick definitions in here. I'm going to slide this whole thing up. And exit my sketch, go to my features, make an extruded cut off of this through all, and I've got a bottom bracket shell. Now, this is all parametric, and that's all great, and everybody's not terribly impressed yet, but what makes this brilliant is the fact that if I get to a point where I've gone down the road a little bit, and just to kind of emphasize this fact, I'm going to throw a few fillets on here. And I'm going to make these, our units are huge on this, so I'm just going to make these big. So I've got some fillets on here that filleted really nicely. And <clears throat> we've gotten to a point where we've realized that there's an issue with the standover height on this and the bottom bracket clearance, and the bottom bracket shell needs to go up a little bit. Now, this is the point where the wheels would fall off this process if this was a typical imported dumb solid, because at this point, what you would have to do is you'd have to take a measurement, you'd have to say the bottom bracket has to go up four millimeters, you'd have to go back to the original design model, whether it came, if it came out of a surfacing package. The designer would then have to go in, modify a surface model by tearing the whole thing apart, reblending, refilleting, all that kind of stuff, all that craziness that you would have to do if this was a typical surface model. And then you'd have to re-import it, you'd have to re-import it, you'd have to replace the import, go in, redo all your associations, blah, 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 blah. It's all a big pain. Well, here, all we do is go back and we edit the feature. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of the original points that were imported from this T-splines model. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it up. Let's say, here we'll get crazy and move it up a little over 10 millimeters. I'm going to say OK. The model's going to regen. All my features are going to update. And I've got my new standover height. So another typical issue with bicycle frames is the seat tube, um, the rear wheel will be placed in here, and depending on how short or long the stays are, which can affect how the bike climbs, sometimes this gap between the rear tire and the seat tube gets too tight. So let's assume for this point that they shortened the rear stays because they wanted the bike to climb better, and the tire is now colliding with the rear seat with the seat tube here. Again, we go back into edit features you'll notice that the model tree rolls back to the original imported surface. I'm going to just grab these points. I'm going to slide this in a little bit. I'm going to now, and I'm going to, so I'll slide this in a little bit and I'll say, okay, now that clears. <clears throat> and then I call the designer and I say, hey, 
uh, I had to modify the frame so that the, seat, the, 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 that the tube clears. And the designer says, good God, that's a horrible kink in there. It looks terrible. Scoot over. And the designer can sit down. And since this, this T-splines model is essentially functions exactly like the T-splines model in Rhino, the designer could even sit down or just stand over the engineer's shoulder, because I know engineers don't like designers touching their stuff, and say, OK, grab these points and move them in a little bit. Let's grab these points and move them in a little bit. And let's straighten out that tube so that that arc is a little more graceful and a little less kink-like. And it's just a simple matter of pushing and pulling some clay around. Now, granted, your seat tube is going to be an issue now because your seat post can't drop, but the rear wheel clears. We're going to accept that and say, OK, the model's going to regen. And we've got our new clearance built in. Everything else stays the same. Another common issue that affects the handling on a bike is the head tube angle and, and the standover height. Well, the standover height just affects the rider, but the head tube angle affects how the thing is going to handle. And let's assume in this, in this case that the, the head tube angle on this is too shallow and it needs to steepen up so the thing speeds up. Again, instead of having to go back to the original surface model, redo the whole thing, change the head angle, you know, re-blend, refill it, all that kind of stuff, re-import, and then redo that. We just come back here, edit the original feature. We can access the points on this original model. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to pick them again. I'm going to rotate this a little bit. You'll notice that there's a, an angle indicator. So I'm going to do it just over two degrees. <clears throat> I'm going to say, OK, that's my right angle. That's the correct angle. <clears throat> and then I'm going to drop it just a little bit. And then again, I can go back to the designer and say, OK, I had to make this change. What do you think? And they say, OK, that's great, but now this curve is not happening right. So either scoot over or let me stand over your shoulder. And we're going to just go ahead and fix this on the fly so that everything looks the way it's supposed to look. So you've got art, you've got engineering, you go in, you modify the thing so that it's going to work right, and the model regens, and everybody's happy. So this is a very simple modification on a very simple part um, as far as you know, just putting in the bottom bracket and shell like that. Let's look at what happens if you were to get a little bit more complicated uh, with your, you know, kind of a little bit down, farther down the line. Because if you're like me, you're skeptical and saying, well, OK, you can modify a hole, but what else can you do? So let's look at a little bit more complete version of this. And Juan was so kind as to take this to the point where the bottom bracket shell is fully defined. There's a, a cutout for a rear swing arm. There's the mounts for the shocks. There's uh, head tube cups seat tube cup, all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> we've gotten down the line a little bit. This thing is developed quite nicely, but we find out that the swing arm pivot is not thick enough on the swing arm side, and it's breaking. And we need to make this part a little bit thinner to accommodate. We can just pick it, slide it in a little bit. The model's going to regen. Obviously, we would do this by dimensions. All the engineers are cringing as I do this. But um, I just want to show that it, it will update. Same thing here. We've got an association built in for this pivot. And let's go ahead and modify our seat tube like we did before. Go back, Edit Feature. The points come up. The model rolls back. I'm slide this in a little bit. Now, these are very simple modifications, but the thing you have to realize is that in a design and engineering environment, if you've got a fussy designer and a fussy engineer in the same spot, this would facilitate a whole lot of rebuild in order just to get this simple modification made if this was a typical surface imported into, into uh, SOLIDWORKS or an engineering environment. So, let it run, it regens, all the associations 
stay the same. <clears throat> Let's go back and modify our head tube again. Going to edit that feature. Go in here and grab this. Now, one thing I didn't mention, but you know, there's a possibility here that you could even leverage one frame and get your sizes built in. So say this, this frame was, a, was an extra large frame and you needed to leverage it down into a medium or a small. You know, you could come in here to the original T-splines and shorten this up a little bit and get basically all your other frames off this original model. So I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to rotate these. I'm hoping I'm not breaking an association here by doing this. But And it successfully regens. So <clears throat> just to prove I'm not doing smoke and mirrors here, do a stringent solid check. I'm going to check everything. No invalid edges or faces found. So this is a, this is a good editable model. Uh, C post feature, again, I'm going to make this a little deeper. And this is all parametric. This is all stuff that you can modify. So this model is essentially a perfect example of artists doing art and engineers doing engineering and combining the two to get a better part than you would have originally. It also ends a lot of arguments between you know, the designer giving you this you know, great model that has all these swoopy highlights and stuff on it, and then there's always the, always the accusation on the engineering side that, oh my goodness, you guys you know, turned it into a brick. And that, that, that argument's just over now because essentially what they give you is what you can use and you can run from there. So. Um, you know, not only is this a great application for a bicycle, but imagine, you know, anything that fits on a person like a shoe or a helmet or anything like that. Um, you could take the designer model and then as you're adding the, the parameters to go through this, if there becomes a fit issue after prototyping it or something like that, you just go in, grab the points, grab the surfaces or the edges, relieve that area a little bit, your model's going to run right back through the model tree and update, and, uh, and then uh, you're back to the races. So. Um, that's pretty much what I wanted to show today. Uh, this is pretty much uh, more of kind of a what it is and what it does kind of uh, kind of webinar as opposed to you know our typical kind of uh, hardcore modeling demo. But um, I encourage you to ask questions at this point. Uh, Matt and Juan are both here, and um, those are the two guys that you're going to want to talk to if you have any questions about this uh, about this product and. Um, from that, uh, I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show today. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Thanks, Kyle. Um, we've got a few questions, um, and let's uh, let's jump into them. One of the one question is whether you can shell uh, an imported T spine surface, and I, I'm not sure if this is the right right one we want to show that on because of some of the scale issues. But um, Kyle, were you were you able to um, get that? get that folder of kind of T-spines primitives that I sent over? Yes. And this is also something new that we've just put together. Um, if you don't have a copy of T-spines for Rhino or access to a subdivision modeler, then we've just put together a bunch of basic primitives. And so these are just quad balls, spheres, um, cubes, boxes, and even like hearts and hands and stuff like that. You can just import into SolidWorks and it's just an editable T-spline kind of piece of clay and then you can turn on the edit feature and um, go ahead and, and push and pull on the model. Um, let's see, if you can just, yeah, just kind of show the, the control points. And so with the different primitives, we have different numbers of control points. But if you, yeah, maybe just want to pull a few things and then go ahead and, uh, and shell this. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure what the, what the measurements are, but um, <clears throat> let's see. Do you want to go ahead and yeah, go ahead and just uh, 
Are you, are you familiar with shelling? Oh, there you go. So if we can zoom in and kind of see what, see how well that worked. Um, yeah, so there we've, um, we've got a shelled T-spline model. Um, let's see, so here's, here's a question. Um, can you freeze a T-splines model in a standard SOLIDWORKS file for someone without T-splines? Um, the answer to that is if you have, um, if you have, if you have TS elements and you've made something and then you send it on to someone else that has SOLIDWORKS but no TS elements, then it will, um, it'll just be like any other imported surface or solid body. So it will, it will be the same shape, they just won't be able to edit it. Um, let's see, um, can we, Cal, can we do some deviation analysis on the edges of this model? On this one? Yeah. Um, uh, coming up zeros, which is what we want to see. That's great. Um, let's see other questions. Um, can we do a solid... This is always a crowd pleaser. Oh, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, maybe this would be a good time to talk about the uh, continuity uh, on T-splines models. Oh, yeah. So, so T-splines models, um, throughout most of the model, it, it's curvature continuous. It, it's uh, C2, and it just stays that way. It just, it just is. Um, like, it's just all the faces are connected in that way. The, one, the, the only points in the model where it's slightly different is what we call star points. And... There's a question that someone typed in about the differences in, of star points and T points, and I think we will go ahead and do another webinar to talk more about those in detail. But basically, star points are, um, if you go ahead and turn on the T-splines control points again, Kyle, they're kind of the, the control points that let the T-spline be non-rectangular. So they have a different, a different valence. So these have three edges coming into those. Uh, into these vertices, and right at that star point, then it's it's G1 smooth, so it's it's tangent continuous. So you'll still be able to shell and offset those. It's just a little bit less smooth um, than the rest of the model. So the uh, the strategy for modeling with T-spines then is you need some control points like this, but to use them only when you need to, and uh, and yeah, and, and just to, just to use them sparingly. So if you notice, you know, this is this is a good <laughs> this is a good zebra layout here. Yeah. Um do you want to kind of do you want to maybe just open up a couple more of those primitives that these again these are brand new and we'll we'll send a um a folder of these primitives to everyone that came to the webinar and then you'll get them as well when you download the free trial. But um so we, we just have these, yeah, kind of these shape basic primitives, but if you want to maybe open up the shape primitives just to kind of show what else we have in there. Um, so maybe uh, maybe uh, the ha head or hand or... Um, so again, this is just kind of, just hopefully these type of shapes will just come in useful for you as far as um, stock models or, or things that you can start your own, own modeling with. Yeah. And you know, I mean, anybody can import something like this into SolidWorks, but they can't make the nose bigger. Um, okay, well, I let me just uh, be take the um, take the presenter back to me. Um, we. As we mentioned, this webinar is especially focused on bringing in models from T-Spines for Rhino into SolidWorks. And we do have some special pricing that we just announced. Um, TS Elements for SolidWorks is $4.99. T-Spines for Rhino is $5.99. Um, if you wanted to get those together, um, it's just under $900, so you'd save a couple hundred dollars. Um, and then also, if you already own T-Spines for Rhino, 
then you can get TS Elements for SolidWorks um, at $200 off until the end of June. So um, this is just our, our way of encouraging um, those who, especially those who already have TS points for Rhino, to be able to take advantage of this way to um, maintain control and the ability of their shapes inside of SolidWorks. Um, if you need a copy of Rhino as well, we can we can throw that in there um, as kind of a package deal as well. So um, let's see. I'm just looking to see if there's any other questions, but um, I guess we'll just say thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, we'll go there, ahead and put. There a, was a question about um, about OBJs, Matt. Oh and yeah. Maybe we just touch on that briefly. Okay. Um, the there was a question about importing an OBJ subdivision surface. Um, Basically, using T-splines for Rhino, you can import a quad-dominant OBJ mesh. And by quad-dominant, we mean like mostly, mostly, mostly quads. You, you don't want to try and do this with, a, with an unorganized triangle mesh or anything like that. But if you bring in a quad-dominant, you know, a couple of triangles is okay. But once you start getting into the, you know, 50, 60, 70, 100, 150 triangles, um, you're not going to want to try and do that. So models from ZBrush, models from Mudbox, models from Moto, models from other sub-D modeling packages will go into T-splines for Rhino as a, as a base mesh. Uh, T-splines will then convert those models into a smooth T-spline surface. That T-spline surface can then be exported from Rhino as a .TSM. Those models can then be brought into SolidWorks exactly like the bicycle frame, and you're off to the races. So essentially, TS Elements bridges, you know, successfully bridges the design world and the engineering world, but not just Rhino and SolidWorks. It bridges ZBrush and SolidWorks, which is something that no other product on the market can do right now. And you know, you're going to want to do your own experiments, and obviously there's some reasonable limits as to how many how many quads that you're going to be able to process, but um, there is a workflow there with some creativity and some and some reasonable file size limits that you could essentially paint something up in ZBrush, run it through T-Splines for Rhino, and get it into SolidWorks. Okay, I'm just looking. There's a couple more questions coming in. Um, okay, and it looks like they might be more more comments than questions. So, um, again, thanks everyone for coming. And uh, let's see. Oh, here's here's another question. When it comes to the mechanical side. Will analysis on the models work? Um, and this is something that um, I, I believe it should work just as any other any other um, imported surface would. Is, is that Juan? You've had more experience on that than we have. What's your experience been? Uh, yeah, but yeah, I don't know what he means. Which he means with. Uh, the analysis on the models from the mechanical side of point of view, uh, but yes, uh, I guess it should work, just yeah. like any other SolidWorks model. Yeah, so doing things like stress analysis. Yep. Ah, okay, uh, okay, and so, yeah, yeah, it works, it works, uh, it works perfectly. Uh, I, I, I did myself and. and I'm even doing an analysis of this frame. I don't know if we have it there, but uh, yes, it works. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. If you if you take a look at, we have kind of a little marketing video put together with this bicycle frame, and at the end of that, we do some uh, some stress analysis. So, um, yeah, so it should work just just fine in that. Matt, there's a question about T splines for Maya models that were created in T splines for Maya. Oh. Um, Wow, that guy's been around for a while. <laughs> um, I uh, yeah, if you have any models that you made using T splines for Maya, then you can you can use those as well. Um, 
Let's see. And we've got, we've got Shen asking about analysis, the one we did before the zebra stripes were turned on that, that maybe didn't work. I, I'm not remembering which analysis that may have been, so if you can remind me, then we can, we can take a look at that again. Um, in, the future, in the future, we'll import OBJ work directly inside TS, TS elements for SolidWorks. Um, I'm not exactly sure what that question means. You, you can today uh, import an OBJ directly into SolidWorks. There's no need to go through T-splines for I know. Um, I know. Do, you, do you have any OBJ files handy, Kyle? You know, Matt, I don't off the, off the top of my head. Um, but uh, let me see. But I, I've got one on my side, but um, we got okay. So someone's saying you cannot import OBJ directly into SolidWorks, and I, I believe that's correct. But what, with the T-spline's plugin loaded, then that does give you the option to load an OBJ as a T-spline. Um, I'm just pulling up my copy of SolidWorks here in the background, um, so we we can show that. But um, here's another question: Can you add points to a T-spline model in SolidWorks? Um, currently, um, there's no. Uh, it's mainly pushing and pulling. We do have we have a hidden feature in there, so you can you can extrude some some things. Um, and uh, you could if, so if you select a face and hold down the the control key, it will actually extrude. That's that's a it's kind of a an advertised feature. But in general, if you do want to add new detail, you want to go back into T spines for I know. Um, all right. Um, so Mark, Mark B. Associate at SolidWorks just sent me a, <clears throat> an OBJ. Thanks, Mark. Let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, so this is, um, Mark said this is an OBJ from, from Modo. And uh, let's see, go ahead and show my screen. Um, and... So with so yeah so with with TL, TS elements loaded then um, then down here you can select the file type and then you can open up an OBJ as a T spline and so here's this propeller model that the Mark just sent over. And that will just open up as a as a smooth T spline model. So it will smooth it will smooth the OBJ so it's actually a smooth T spline surface, but that's how it will read into SolidWorks. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So that means that you could leverage stuff that you find on TurboSquid, you could you know, models that you get off the web, but keep in mind they need to be quads. Quads, quads, quads. You don't want to try and do it with a million triangles. Okay. Um, well, thanks again, everyone, for coming, and uh, we'll see you at a new webinar soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.